In this video, we're going to talk about uh, sensitivity analysis using metaphor in R. When we um, do a meta-analysis, we have to make inclusion decisions and we'll have to worry about the quality of the studies that are included. And both these kinds of things can be analyzed as moderators. Moderators were covered in an earlier video. Um, and this one, uh, we're going to talk about the models and data. So the idea is uh, your um, results uh, can be influenced by particularly deviant data points. So they can either be an extreme distance from the mean or from the uh, regression line, or you might have a very large sample that's overly influential. Or you might have missing studies. So um, I'm going to show you some ways to uh, look for outliers and uh, remove them. I'm going to show you some ways to look for uh, missing studies or at least the, the evidence that they might be missing and then I'll show you something called leave one out. Uh, for sensitivity analysis uh, one thing you can do is forest plot by precision. This is um, very much like the funnel plot. Um, the trim and fill method for the funnel plot was covered earlier in a funnel plot video. Uh, in this one I'm just going to show you how to do a forest plot by precision which I find easy to understand. Um, show you uh, a statistical test, regression test for funnel plot asymmetry. Um, how to look at residuals with metaphor and then how to look at uh, leave one out analysis. In this graph the studies have been sorted by effect size. You can sort them by the um, uh, precision and I'll show you how to do that in, uh, in the end of this uh, video. Um, this one has been sorted by effect size, but you can see by looking at the uh, size of the um, dot in the center and by the width of the wings that there's a strong relationship between the precision and the estimate. And this is uh, consistent with availability bias. Um, Eggers regression basically uh, is a, a test of funnel plot asymmetry. And uh, what you'd like to see is that there's no relation between the precision and the, um, the size of the estimate. And so regression gives you a, a, a relation, a regression line that relates the precision to the size of the estimate. And um, Metaphor offers several tests. Uh, the reg test is, a, is the default. And um, here I've shown you the results for the sleep data that I showed earlier, uh, in this case the funnel plot asymmetry test shows a z of 6 and change and it's highly significant and that means that just as you would expect from looking at the uh, the um, data that the funnel plot has significant asymmetry. To find outliers uh, you first run a meta-analysis as you would for a funnel plot or a forest plot or most anything you want and then you use the R student command and it gives you the residual in this case there there were no um, there were no moderators in the model so it's just a, uh, a deviation from the mean in terms of the size of the residual its standard error and then a, a Z and you'll notice that um, the only thing that's bigger than about two on this set of data that are visible anyhow is a uh, number 12. So study number 12 is a little bit bigger than 2. Um, because you have so many of them I would choose a value like 2.5 or 3 but that's really up to you. Um, now I've put in a moderator in this model and I've asked for residuals and you can see it does the same thing, the same command. Uh, study 12 has gone from about 2.08 to about 2.05 so it hasn't made much difference in this uh, particular residual. So um, study 12 is a bit of an outlier in this um, set of data. You can uh, remove an outlier from the data um, during the uh, running of the model. So this is, says, you know, use metaphor. And here data are divine and I've got a minus C34. So 34th row, 34th observation, 34th study will be omitted from the uh, analysis here. And when you see divine 2, it'll have one less study than divine 1 or divine res. Um, 
in this case, uh, I've got uh, the same thing for divine, but now um, in addition to study number 34, I've also deleted study number 17. So this one will have two less observations in it. When you do that, you can then plot the results both with all the studies and then with the outlying studies removed. And that is um, particularly when the uh, inference doesn't change. That gives your reader additional confidence that your conclusions are sound. You can uh, run a leave one out analysis where uh, each study is removed in turn. So um, if they had 10 studies, then the first time through, number one is gone and two through 10 are in. Second time, you put one back in, but you remove two, so the studies are one, three through 10, and so forth. And um, this lets you see the impact of each and every study on the overall conclusions. So it helps you to find and uh, remove problematic studies, and it also um, helps you to share uh, the findings with your reader. All right, so now I want to show you um, McNatt data, which I've introduced earlier. These are Pygmalion studies in, um, in industry. So let's see an example. Okay, so um, we start by loading the library metaphor. We want to load XLSX because I'm going to read in data. McNatt data is uh, read in here, and it's got uh, the... Formatting is kind of ugly, but it's got um, the number of people in treatment, number in control, size of D, a moderator, and the variance of D. Uh, so here at McNatt Res 1, that is the sort of a common garden variety meta analysis. And we see we have 17 studies, and the overall estimate is 1.09, and um, confidence level from 0.73 to 1.45. Here we have sorted the data by precision. So uh, mcnat.dat.sort gets mcnat.dat, and I want to order it by mcnat.dat the variance. So this is the precision of the estimate. And that variable is this one. OK, so uh, I have now sorted the data. and um, and I've asked the computer to print out the sorted data, and you can see the variance is small, and it's getting larger. So the most precise studies will be at the top. Um, we run the meta-analysis on the sorted data, so I did that. Uh, here we go. Everything is the same except for mcnat.sort, and now we've asked it to plot the, re the result. And where would I be? Here it is. So here's the result. The most precise study is here, and the um, less precise studies are down at the bottom. And you can see there is a bit of a drift to the right, although it's not as, pr as pronounced as the, um, the sleep data. We ran the forest plot by precision, but that is only a plot. We have this regression test. And in this case, the z value is not significant, although it's moving in that direction. And recall, we only have 17 studies, so the power isn't the best. Um, here we are looking for outliers with uh, residuals. And you can see the values of z are pretty small, except for study 10 here as a z that's larger than 3. So that is a suspicious study. So let's see what happens if we run without that. So here we've got take out study number 10. And we've rerun it, and now we've got um, 0.95 is the overall estimate, and it goes from 0.61 to 1.28. Um, we can uh, run a leave one out analysis, and here we've got that study 10 is missing, and you'll notice that we've got that 0.72 to 1, oops, 0.61 to 1.29. 0.61 to 1.29. And um, you can see that uh, I squared is 0.91. It's still quite high, but it's, it's lower than um, in the rest of the cases. All right, so um, 
We can also take these data and look at the overall estimate. So I've asked here for forest, and this is res2, which is the name of the output from the leave one out. Res2 estimate, which is this value, and then res2 standard error squared. So uh, standard error is this value here. And if I run that, I get this graph, um, and you can see that with study 10 missing, we've got a, it, it's lower, it's at 0 0.95, um, 0.61 to 1.29, but its its wings are, are drawn in, so you have more, um, more confidence or a smaller um, confidence interval for this particular value. Um, but you can see that, you know, all of the estimates, the overall estimates when we re reduce the uh, studies by one are, are quite high. That's it!